coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Now, this was Jesus, who the Bible says in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So it means that no matter the relationship and the depth of proximity Jesus had with God, it never stopped him from praying. No matter how close Jesus felt he was to God, no matter how familiar he felt with God, it never stopped him from praying. service so we'll take our time and go through a few things in the word of God today. Luke chapter 11. I'll give you the title of the message soon. Luke 11 and verse 1. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he seized that one of his disciples said to him, Lord teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So this is the verse that leads up to the famous Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, yeah? Okay, we're not going to look at the Lord's Prayer today. But what do we learn from this verse? It says, as he was praying, the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. We see there that it is possible to learn how to pray. Amen. It's possible to be taught and to learn how to pray. The fact that you're a Christian... The fact that you're born again doesn't mean you know how to pray and how to pray effectively. So we see that it's possible to learn how to pray. We also see that the disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray when they observed him praying. Right? These disciples had been with him and they observed him praying. So it means from his lifestyle, from what they saw and observed, they could learn something about prayer. Do you agree with those two things? So it's possible to be taught and to learn how to pray. And it's possible to watch and observe Jesus. And you might say, hmm, something I'm seeing here, I can learn from it. Okay? So let's first of all define prayer. Prayer is simply conversation, communication, fellowship with God. Prayer is simply conversation, communication, Fellowship with God that is born out of the love of God. Fellowship with God that is born out of the love of God with a consciousness of what God has already done in the sacrifice of Jesus. Very powerful definition. Many important things in that definition. Prayer is... Simply conversation, communication, fellowship with God that is born out of the love of God with a consciousness of what God has already done in the sacrifice of his son Jesus. Let's look at Luke 22 and verse 39. And from here we'll get the title of our message. Luke 32, 22 rather, 39. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed and his disciples followed him. Everybody say, as he was accustomed. Say it again, accustomed. What does that mean? Lifestyle, habit, ritual. That word accustomed is a word 
ethos. Say ethos. Ethos. And it means custom, usage, manner. We want to do something. Custom, usage, manner. We want to do something. And that word ethos is also an English word. And in the English, it means the same thing. And ethos is the distinguishing character, sentiment, guiding belief of someone or of a group of people. And ethos is a distinguishing character, sentiment, guiding belief, moral nature of a group of people or a person. And ethos. Everybody say ethos. He was accustomed. That was his ethos. Today's message is titled Lessons from the Prayer Ethos of Jesus. Lessons from the prayer ethos of Jesus. If I gave you the topic without explaining that, you look at me, anya, anya. <laughs> Lessons from the prayer ethos of Jesus. In other words, lessons from the prayer custom of Jesus. Lessons from the way Jesus used to pray. Lessons from the habits of prayer we can see in Jesus. The disciples observed him and they said, teach us to pray. We're going to observe his prayer ethos and from there, we'll learn some things about prayer. Are you ready to go on this with me? Yeah. Amen. Now let's just read some scriptures just to give us a background. Just several scriptures. Mark 1.35. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. Mark 6.45 to 46. Just write the scriptures. Immediately, he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Jesus prayed quite a bit. Luke 5, 16. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. John 14, 16. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. These scriptures and many other scriptures reveal a Jesus who prayed a lot. Amen. These scriptures and many others what we're going to see, they show us a Jesus who prayed a lot. Now this was Jesus who the Bible says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. So it means that no matter the relationship and the depth of proximity Jesus had with God, it never stopped him from praying. No matter how close Jesus felt he was to God, no matter how familiar he felt with God, it never stopped him from praying. Truth number one, we never grow up in Christianity from a life of prayer. Rather, we grow up into a life of deeper prayer. We never grow up in Christianity from a life of prayer. But rather we grow up into a deeper life of prayer. Show me a mature Christian and I'll show you one who prays even deeper than he prayed five years before. Ministers sometimes need to watch this. You don't get so mature and settled in ministry or get so busy in ministry that you don't pray anymore. You're so used to God responding to your prayers. Miracles happen when you preach. Word of knowledge is flowing. And so you get so used to God, so familiar with him, that your prayer life is not what it used to be. You never grow up as a Christian from a life of prayer. Rather, you grow up into a deeper life of prayer. Amen. So when we look at the ethos, the prayer ethos of Jesus, we see not just how much he prayed, but we're going to see how he prayed. Not just how much he prayed. And it's interesting studying this to find that he actually prayed a lot. And most of that is overlooked when we talk about Jesus. We talk about the miracles, talk about the mighty things. He prayed a lot. But it's not so much how much he prayed, 
But what are the things that characterized the way he prayed? Amen. Number one, his prayer ethos was born out of an intentional decision. The prayer ethos of Jesus is born out of an intentional decision. Mark 1.35 In the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and prayed. Having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and prayed. There are two things you can see from this. First of all, we see the physical act of waking up early to pray. And I'm not here to preach that you can pray in the afternoon or that you must wake up early and pray. But do you see that it takes a lot of discipline to wake up early and pray? What is the advantage of waking up early to pray? What's the advantage? Huh? No distraction. You're a well-taught church. Some people tell you, tell you, wake up before dawn so you can catch the demons because they move around at that time. It's got nothing, there was nothing spiritual about his decision to wake up early and pray. It was just a wise decision. You can't lie in bed, rolling around in bed till 10 o'clock every day and tell me it is when you get up and jump into your day that you find time to pray. Those are the kind of prayers you now make while brushing your teeth or while shaving or while bathing your baby. You are praying at the same time. Jesus woke up early. That's the first thing you see there. The physical discipline of getting up to pray. But we also, and, and write, write this down, Psalm 119, 147. I rise before the dawning of the morning and cry for help, I hope, in your word. So it's okay to wake up early to pray. We're going to learn some practical things today. Try and set your alarm 5.30 in the morning. If you had to catch a 7 o'clock Arik flight, you would set your alarm for 4.30 in the morning, wouldn't you? If you live in Lagos, you might set it for 3 a.m. to be able to get across the island to get to the airport. So take it that you have a flight to catch at 6 o'clock in the morning with Jesus. Rise up early and pray. 30 minutes, 20 minutes. That was his ethos. We see a lot that he got up early in the morning to pray. And the psalmist talked about it as well. But apart from that, to be able to wake up early in the morning to pray, it tells me that Jesus also made plans and prepared for his prayer. It was part of his schedule. He made plans. He was intentional about his prayer life. He was ready to make any sacrifices whatsoever to spend time with God. To get up early to do that, Jesus was ready to make any sacrifices, give up anything to spend time with God. What we want to milk from this as we learn from Jesus' prayer, prayer ethos is what sacrifices are we willing to make in this day and age, this 2022, this time when the world is racing and there are things competing for our attention. What sacrifices are we willing to make to spend time with God? Do you know to be able to even get up early to pray, you might need to go to bed early? Huh? That means you may sacrifice the Netflix. Hello, hi. Now, the sacrifice may be the night before. Because you and I know that if you sleep at 2 a.m., you ain't waking up before dawn to pray. Forget that. So you plan. He prepared for his prayer. And he made sacrifices. He was ready to do anything necessary to spend time with God. It says in Psalm 5 verse 3, In the morning he hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare, from the Amplified Version, I prepare a prayer. I prepare a sacrifice for you. And I watch and wait for you to speak to my heart. That is beautiful. In the morning, I prepare. I prepare a prayer for you, and then I wait. That means there are other things he could have been doing, but he didn't do them. He made sacrifices. Many of us want to hear from God. To do that, you have to shut down certain things and sometimes make certain sacrifices to spend time with him. Glory be to God. Amen. He made those sacrifices. You see, in Luke 5.16, it says, he himself often 
say often, showing again he was regular. He often withdrew. Think about it. Often. So Luke is describing Jesus. He says this Jesus, he often, does that describe you among your family members? Does that describe you among your colleagues? Oh, every lunchtime, when everybody else sits down to gossip and talk, she often withdraws to a corner in the office and we see her reading her Bible and praying. Or she often goes into her car and she spends her lunchtime every Wednesday and Friday in her car. She often does that. People knew Jesus that he often withdrew into the world to spend time with a God whom he was already very close to, but he didn't take that relationship for granted. Any kind of communication with anybody is learned and any kind of communication with anybody must be prepared for. I'll say it again. Any kind of communication in any relationship we have, it is learned. And this is a quick sidetrack key for those who are married and want to be married. If you get married because you're in love and you think by default you have great communication, you're going to find out very, very soon that it doesn't happen like that. You've got to learn communication with your spouse. No matter how passionately in love, sexually attracted, perfect fit you felt you were before marriage, when you get into that same house, think of it this way. Imagine if you're a French man who speaks only French and you marry a, an Igbo woman who speaks only Igbo. Can you imagine that house? And they love each other passionately. They are attracted, but one speaks only Igbo and grew up in the thickness of Igbo land. And one speaks only French and grew up in France. Do they love each other? Yes. Are they attracted sexually? Yes. Can they make babies? Oh, sure. But can they communicate? No. Sex is not communication. Transfer of money is not. They have to learn. One has to either learn Igbo, one has to learn French, or they have to find a mutual language to learn. It's the same thing with God. You're coming from where you're coming from. God is who he is. He's positionally brought you into his home. But your languages are different. So you've got to learn the language of God. Learn the language of faith. Learn what he, he understands and what he hears. Or you might be born again in his house and you can't communicate with him. Do you love him? Yes. Does he love you? Yes. It must be learned. Any kind of communication must be prepared for. Think about it. If a young man wants to go and propose to a lady to get married, she's communicating, he wants to communicate rather, to that lady that he wants to get married. Is it likely in these times? Because now it's apparently proposal is a major thing. And sometimes you wonder if it is the drama or the proposal or the actual heart. Because some of the things I see now, I'm quite concerned about the drama, whether the real proposal actually is inside there. But what, what happens? These young men prepare. They get cameras, they put flowers, they go to restaurants. Wherever they came from, they must kneel down on one knee. <laughs> if it, that may be the first and last time that kneeling down will happen. But that proposal, I, somebody knelt down for me now. With a chocolate and a link. But I think since that day, I've not seen. I don't recall any kneeling down since that day. Have you, baby? Kneel down for me. There's no, I don't see that, but that day. Should I tell you where it was? You see your heart like it. I just melted like putty. What happened? He prepared to communicate. Any communication needs to be prepared for. But we just think I'm born again. I walk into his presence. No, no, prepare. Jesus prepared for every time he spent time with God. Amen. It means he did not pray by happenstance. Hello. He didn't pray fire brigade prayers. There's fire on the mountain. Pray, pray. Let us pray. We need to pray, pray. It was often his lifestyle. Regardless of the situation, he prayed. Amen. Second thing about his prayer ethos. So what was the first thing we said? It was intentional. An intentional decision, yes. Second thing, 
the prayer ethos of Jesus, his prayer ethos was primarily, listen now, private and personal. Private and personal. Matthew 26, verse 36 to 44. Follow me with this story now. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while we go. While we go, while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. While I go, but he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply depressed, distressed rather, sorry. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death, stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying, oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, what, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time he went away and prayed saying, oh my father, if this cup cannot pass from me, unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Certain things are characteristic of a person with a private and personal prayer ethos. Number one, when you have a private and personal prayer ethos, you appreciate prayer partners, but you don't depend on them to pray. You appreciate prayer partners, but you don't depend on them to pray. Prayer partners, whether individual or prayer partners when we come for corporate prayer meetings, like we do on Tuesdays here, like we do online some, some, sometimes, they're wonderful. They're a great support system. But you can't depend on prayer partners to be able to pray. Truth number two, prayer partners may kickstart your prayer life, but they cannot become your prayer life. Prayer partners may kickstart, jumpstart your prayer life, but they cannot become your prayer life. If the only time you pray is when people are with you, I just feel like, I just like it when my prayer partner comes and we pray. And that's the only way and time you can pray. You're not developing yourself spiritually. Should I continue? Hmm? Good support system. He took Peter, James, and John with him. So it's okay to have prayer partners. But you dare not depend on them. And believe that without prayer partners or somebody to pray, listen, for you or with you, which is what the body of Christ has slowly become, people no longer develop their own private and personal. People feel inadequate if they don't have somebody joined to them in prayer. It's not meant to be that way. You're actually shortchanging yourself from growing in the grace of God. The prayer ethos of Jesus was such that he was private and personal. Too many believers are people dependent in their prayer life. People, oh, maybe in a particular church, we don't pray enough. In this church, we don't pray. You do you pray? Who is the church? The church is me. The church is you. The very ones who complain in, a, in any church that the church doesn't pray enough are the ones who don't pray. Simple. Because what they're simply saying is we need to gather together to pray. No, pray. You are the church. If each one of you prays for me, the church is praying for me. If each one of you prays for one another, the church is praying for each other. We need to get out of the thinking that except we are in a group, group corporate prayer is excellent and we, we believe that. 
But when you become people dependent, when people need to be with you, to pray with you or pray for you, you're not developing yourself spiritually. Amen. 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 We learned from the healing of the paralytic in this church, Matthew 9, Mark 2, and Luke 5, that you can have a support system like the paralytic had, but when the paralytic was held up through the roof by his partners, when he got to Jesus, Jesus spoke to him. And it was his faith that made him whole. So again, I say prayer partners are great to jumpstart, to kickstart. That's why we're in the body of Christ. That's why you're in a family group. Your family group members can be prayer partners. But if the minute they are not there, you can't pray. If when you're alone in your room, you need to pick up your phone to call someone to pray with you, you are not developing yourself spiritually. The prayer ethos of Jesus was such. It was private and personal. You've got to learn to successfully communicate with God when you're apparently on your own. The purpose of prayer partners is for iron to sharpen iron. But for some of us who are looking for prayer partners, where we are wood, or we are candle, or we want an iron to be a prayer partner. No, the Bible expects iron to sharpen what? Iron. So it's okay, iron is sharpening iron, but you're developing yourself, and your partner is also developing. That means on your own, you can communicate with God. Why could Jesus do that? Because somebody with a private and personal prayer ethos has a revelation of the fatherhood of God. Next on Fresh Dew. The only person that can disappoint you and cut you off from God is Jesus. The day Jesus disappoints you, walk away from God. There will be no connection anyway between you and God anymore. But if Jesus does not disappoint me, I could be broken, I could be bruised, I could be battered by what someone does to me. But because I have my connection to my Abba Father, I'll rise up again and keep moving with him. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.